And here he is, Gary Cohn, Director of the National Economic Council, joining us from the White House. Gary, welcome back. Good to see you, sir. Good to see you too, Stuart. The market's down, interest rates are up. You worried about this rise in interest rates? No, look, we're, we're, we're not worried. Obviously, the interest rate market is trying to find a new level here, trying to figure out what's going on with inflation, what levels are going to be the right clearing levels. Is The market's trying to figure that out right now. But if you look at what's happened in the markets right now, remember, we had a stock market that was up almost close to 6% in, in the first month of the year. We had interest rates back up a little bit here, but we're still at really historically low levels in interest rates. So this is a dip, correct? I mean, you're the guy who used to run Goldman Sachs. You know a thing or two about the stock market. Would you characterize this as a dip? Look, I, can, I characterize it as a consolidation after almost a 6% rally in the first month of the year, after a market that, that had a sort of, you know, just continuous uptape all of last year. So we literally had, you know, 15, 16 months of just continuous up. We're seeing a, a three or four day consolidation here, which would be a normal trading pattern. But, you know, we had, you know, very good economic news today in the job numbers. Um, and we've got a lot of good momentum going on in the economy with the tax reform that have just gone through. The good news in the job numbers, it, it, look, it, this is my opinion, was the near 3% rise in wages over the past year, as opposed to just 200,000 new jobs. Yeah. It's wages that's the good news. Well, Stuart, you and I have been talking about the lack of wage growth now for a year. And one of the real impetuses for our tax reform and tax cut plan was to get real wages to grow in the United States. We haven't had real wage growth in a long time in the United States. Look, did we see real wage growth this, this month? Yes, we did. It's one month, so I, I, I am excited about that. But what we need to see is a long-term trend of re real wage growth in the United States. And hopefully this is the start of a long-term trend of real wage growth. The Atlanta Fed says in the first quarter we had annualized economic growth of 5.4%. That's a very big number. Are they complete outliers? Well, look, that's the Atlanta Fed's forecast of where they're seeing the first quarter. We'd be very excited if that number is correct. We'd be very happy to, to accept the number with a five. We'd be very, very excited for the number starting with a four. Look, we, we, we just ended up getting the last quarter's um, first reading of GDP. There were some interesting dynamics in the fourth quarter number because of the tax plan and what people did. And people act very rationally in the fourth quarter. Um, and expensing a lot of things through and, and, and drawing inventories down. So we do think there will be a lot of inventory momentum in the first quarter. So we are expecting a strong quarter. But remember, that Atlanta survey is just a survey of a forecast of where they think the GDP number is going to be. But look, we're, we're pretty optimistic. And we're pretty excited about what's going on in the economy. Well, the president mentioned maybe more tax cuts or certainly some tinkering with more tinkering with the tax cut. Uh, I think he called it a second phase. You want to tell us more about that? Because we'd love to hear. Well, look, the president is always trying to deliver for the American workers, the American public. We would really like to make the individual side of tax reform permanent. That's one thing that we didn't get done, and we would love to go back and make it permanent as soon as possible. And the president is really, you know, driving to get that done. He wants to make sure that every hardworking American gets a permanent tax cut. Um, I have to ask you something that it may be politically difficult. The unemployment rate amongst African Americans went up from 6.8 percent way up to 7.7 percent. That's a political problem, isn't it? Look, Stuart, for, for the 12 months, we're still at a historic low in the African American unemployment number. Yes, we did see it tick up for the one month. But as I said in the wage growth number, look, these are, this is a one month number. If the 12-month number is still at a historic low, these numbers are very volatile from month to month. But look, it is a number that we're watching, and it's a number that concerns us for the one month. But look, if it's a trend, it's very concerning. If it's a one-month blip, it's not concerning. We'll wait to see what happens next month, just like the wage growth. We're hoping that that's not a trend. But we're hoping the wage growth is a trend. Uh, the chair of the DNC says this. Donald Trump continues to take credit for the strong economy he inherited from President Obama. But instead of rewarding American workers for fueling our nation's prosperity, 
Trump and Republicans in Congress have given massive tax cuts to big corporations and the top 1% at the expense of the middle class. Gary, your response, please. Well, Stuart, I, I, I have trouble answering that question because I can't stop laughing every time someone says that to me. So tell those 3 million workers they just got tax, cu tax cut bonuses or just got a wage increase or just got bigger contributions to their 401k plans that the corporates or the top 1% are taking the tax cuts. What we're seeing here, and you saw it here in wages, and like I said, we hope this is a trend, that our tax plan is driving real wage growth. It's driving a better economy. It's driving more home ownership. We're seeing more home ownership. We're seeing everything we want to see in the economy, in the real economy, in the work in the workers of this country. I think that what, what people are saying is just absolutely ludicrous. They also talked about it being crumbs. I think those crumbs are a full bakery by now. There's so many crumbs laying around. <laughs> That's a good line. Very good line. Uh, uh, Gary, uh, how much credit would you give to President Obama for the current state of the economy. Look, President Obama's been out of office over a year. Here, here, here's an interesting stat, and we'll just throw this one out there. How many manufacturing jobs did the Obama administration create in their last year in office? Okay, uh, I'll answer it. It was a negative number. How many manufacturing jobs did the Trump administration create in the first year of their administration? Okay, the answer is over 200,000. You tell me who's driving the economy. When President Trump got elected, the corporate world and the small business world, they got excited about a world where they weren't going to have to deal with overregulation, where bank credit was going to be available to them, where they thought tax reform was going to happen, and they started investing in their businesses. They started hiring people. We've had over 2 million jobs created last year, over two point, almost 2.6 million jobs created since the election because people got optimistic about the economy. That's, that's the numbers. Those are the facts. The facts speak for themselves. What are the, the big tech companies, what are they going to do with all that money that they're bringing back to America? We're talking hundreds of billions of dollars. Yeah. Well, first of all, they're going to pay us a tax to bring it back, yep. which is good for everyone. And then they're going to, look, Apple, which has already announced they're bringing back their money, is going to invest an enormous amount of it into the United States. They're hiring 20,000 new workers. They're building a second campus. I, you know, Amazon's talking about, not talking about, they're, they're, they're out exploring where to build their second new campus. You're going to see massive investment from these tech companies when they repatriate cash. The, you know, Stuart, we got to remember, it's February 2nd. We passed the, we, we signed the tax bill, what, five weeks ago, five and a half weeks ago? Everyone wants instant satisfaction. Give it some time to work through the systems. The, the, the tech companies' earnings are out tonight and some next week. You're going to see more and more announcements, what they're doing with their earnings, what they're doing with their repatriation, and how they're going to drive the, the economy here going forward. In the last 30 seconds that I have available, will you tell us more about the tax cuts or the tax tweaking that you're trying to do, other than making individual cuts permanent? What else you got? Look, the president's always trying to make America more competitive. When he was at the World Economic Forum last week, he talked about America being open for business and America being very competitive right now. When you look at how we're competitive, we're competitive because we're deregulating or we're regulating in a smart way. We've got very affordable and available energy, and we've got a tax rate that makes us competitive with the world. He wants to continue to make us competitive with the rest of the world, and taxes is a big component with competing with the rest of the world, and we need to make the personal side of the tax code permanent. Okay. Gary Cohn, look, thanks very much for taking time out with us this morning, so we do appreciate it. Thank you.